Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for today. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit off the beaten path. It, it's been about a year since I uploaded my Tier Maker video showing the how I ranked each and every raid in the game. Uh, and I thought I should bring it back just before I can kind of get back to my regular schedule programming and start <laughs> getting back to my guides and, and testing content when I can actually play the game again. Uh, so I thought I'd kind of go through and show how I personally rank each uh, DLC episode. I, I may refer to it as DLCs or episodes. They kind of change it halfway through DLC, uh, DC Universes on Life to episodes, where before we called it DLCs. Uh, it's going to be my personal ranking of it, because uh, I'll, I'll try to kind of encompass the entire uh, aspect of the DLC. Uh, I can offer a little bit of a unique perspective because I think all of them except for maybe two, I was there at the release of them uh, and pretty much throughout the entire time. Uh, so I can tell you what it was like in the release and not just what it was like after the fact. And that kind of plays into my rankings as well. I was going to do them all randomly, but then I thought it probably make more sense to go in order. Uh, so right now, uh, these are the, all 37 episodes in order. So we'll kind of start with uh, Fight for the Light, which was the first one. Uh, this is the episode... Um, it introduced the light power and basically the reason why you don't see uh, the Fortress of Solitude raids or the Batcave raids uh, because those actually came in game updates. Uh, imagine that being the game instead of fixing bugs and, and doing little things in game updates that we actually got entire raids. So that changed pretty quick. Uh, but uh, this was the first actual DLC release we got. It was a nice change because we'd been so used to the beta powers only and we got to try something with light. Uh, not was Light, when it first came out, wasn't uh, as OP as, as what people think or what they think about Light then. Light saw a whole bunch of changes. Uh, it was kind of okay when it came out, then it kind of got better, then it worse again. It's kind of been, it was like a roller coaster at Light at the beginning. Uh, we did all get a, a token that you can switch to Light at any time, a uh, part of that. And some people used the uh, item duplication glitch on it so they could switch to Light at any time. But besides that, um, I rank it to be just because of what it meant for the game. Like it was our first new power. We got access to what three alerts, I believe. Owen, Owen Science Cells, uh, Star Labs, and Coast City. So we got those three alerts. We got that Fares duo, Fares Aircraft. Uh, all the lanterns, like um, uh, Vice and, and Hal Jordan, like all the lantern characters in the game came in that DLC, a part of that content. So it was a it was a first time that there was actual major change to the game. Uh, Lightning Strikes was the second one. Uh, this one is where we saw the electricity power set come out. Uh, and it was... Electricity was completely broken OP for anything that involved AOE damage. So like FOSS 2 trash ads, uh, like mob clearing, stuff like that. Uh, it wasn't the best for boss fights at all. It was pretty terrible there. So that's why you bring like a fire or gadgets DPS back then. But uh, nothing could touch electricity if there was a whole bunch of ads. It was just ridiculous. Um... Uh, but other than that, we got the coat. We got the um, uh, coast. No, Central City. We got the Central City map, and I don't know if that was a good thing, considering how often Central City's been reused over the years. It's been reused uh, six or seven different times. Uh, and then we got the open world bounties as well. So that was the first time where we had to kind of go all over the city finding those bounties. It was a lot easier to do it reset uh, because uh, you'd have so many groups together moving together because you couldn't solo them or anything like that. Uh, the Central City missions were pretty annoying. You had the Reaper mission. You had this mission where you had to chase the, the, the people in Central City and then kind of draft behind them and absorb their, uh, whatever, their flash, uh, whichever you want, speed force, energy, as you could call it, or maybe that's what it was called. But it used to be really annoying because the AI would constantly dodge and weave on you, so you, you'd have such a hard time trying to catch the and drain the speed force from them, and you have to do it like 10 times, so it took like 25 minutes to do that mission sometimes. I think they changed it after the fact, but uh, it was pretty annoying when it came out. But really, uh, that DLC brought like the tier 2.5 gear, the high voltage gear. Uh, the Central City trinket was nice. That was really great when it came out. Uh, everyone ran that trinket and its abilities. But in terms of content, that wasn't really that much. Uh, Battle for Earth. This is a tricky one. Battle for Earth, you can't rate it on the release. Because it was a disaster, the release. Honestly, this is probably the worst episode they ever released in terms of how it was released. Like that was, there was no test server back then. Um, but I mean, Gates was bugged. They had the Cyclops bug where you couldn't even progress through it. They had the Rollers buff system working in raids, so that meant that you could queue up to a raid without a tank and actually do better than with it with the tank because the whole gr group got the uh, defense buff. 
So back then, I started this game as a, as a fire tank in the beta, and then when Inner Sanctum came out, it switched to ice. Uh, but uh, Battle for Earth DLC 3 was the DLC that made me switch to light and start DPSing, because no one wanted to run with a tank, because tanks were useless. You got the, you actually get the speed feed in Prime Battleground without a tank. Uh, that's also when Earth came out. Earth deals, uh, Earth as a power sucked when it came out. It sucked for tanking, sucked for DPS. It just was really lackluster when it came out compared to what light and electricity was. But, I mean, after that slowly... Oh, even better on top of that, when the DLC gear came out, the tank gear actually gave you less defense than what the gear you already had. So you actually had worse stats by running the DLC gear. But I mean, after they got it fixed, um, Prime Battleground also brought the OP item. That was the first time they had an OP item in the game. I mean, Gates and, and Prime are really, really fun raids. I would love running them, but I mean, at release, it was terrible. So that's why I have to give it an A, just because once everything was kind of figured out. But disaster at release. Uh, last laugh, that was the PvP DLC. I mean, if you didn't PvP, then I think you got the Shady... Heroes got the Shady Nightclub and the villains got the police station, that duo. But I mean, if you didn't PvP, then you didn't really have enjoyment from that. Not the PvP was kind of interesting because we got the, the Watchtower and Hollow Doom, the AV8 maps. But I mean, it was if you PvP it was fun. If not, then I mean you didn't. Well it also introduced Shield. That's the DLC that brought in the Shield weapon. But not like we'll ever get another PvP DLC again. Uh, five was Hand of Fate. Hand of Fate's a uh, fail, or D, that's for sure. That was the first time we had open world operations. So you had With a Vengeance and Metropolis and Black Dawn and Gotham. You had, it was, it was so much lag on the PS side for, like, I was on PC, but it was still kind of laggy for us. But on PS, I remember, like, you couldn't even go near the area because of all the clowns that was spawning out in open world. You lagged. The other issue that was more prevalent on the PC side, or it could have been on PS side too, but you had a lot of villains hanging out there at the clowns. So that when you died from Tal or the clowns, they would turn your cog and you'd get kicked back to the rally point because no one could res you because a villain was resing you and they took no damage because it was a hero instant. So, I mean, eventually they moved inside, but I mean, with the vengeance, you spent more time running around open world metropolis than trying to get to like Eclipso at the end. It, it was just, it was just a fail concept. Like the raids themselves weren't terrible. But there's the whole concept of that DLC. Same thing with the Relegator open, or Open World Operations. Just the concept of that DLC was a fail. Uh, home Turf was the next one. It's tricky. Home Turf really didn't have anything. We had those like annoying Open World missions in Strikers Island and, and Arkham, um, Arkham Island. Those... Oh, sorry. Ace, Arkham Island was villains. Ace Chemicals was the heroes. But yeah, it was just those daily missions, and then after your entire week, you'd have like that inside instance where you'd get that weapon box. Uh, like the turf weapons were nice. But besides that, the main point of home turf was to introduce um, layers. So we had the layers, we had the layer amenities, you had all the collections for the layer, uh, like the R&D stations, bar and target, all that kind of stuff. So the DLC didn't have much content, but it was just what it meant to the game in terms of layers and in terms of uh, the white mods that came out with it. So it just kind of reshaped the game, but I mean, nothing came out for it in terms of content wise, really. And the missions were really lackluster. And that brings us to Origin Crisis. Obviously, there's not pretty much self explanatory there. Origin Crisis kind of shaped the game uh, in more ways than one in terms of difficulty wise, in terms of what they expected players to do, in terms of like farming content or like farming gear. Because Origin Crisis was designed in mind that you couldn't beat the content until you had started to level up. So you couldn't just walk into the raids and complete them. You had to do the alerts, the solos, and gear up and then step into the raids. So it was an interesting concept from that point of view and tons of like open world maps because you had the um, uh, the challenges that were the Iconics challenges, the hunt and test subject. You had Brother in Arms, Family Reunion, obviously Nexus and Paradox as wave as well. So brand new content, new map, well kind of recycled Central City again, but I mean brand new content, brand new maps, uh, interesting stuff, like loads and loads of content. Like Epic Odyssey was five months after the DLC release to get that, to get that feed. And it, it, on average, you'd have like three hour runs and raids. Like a, you, people are thinking like a pug fail raid's an hour nowadays. No, a pug fail raid in like Paradox was like five hours. Uh, after that, we had Sons of Trigon. Hmm, not sh Trigon was, we, I don't think we had a raid in Trigon. No, it was the Tunnelus duo, the Rune Cathedral was a duo. 
Um, we got that Raven Bounty and Trigon's Prison. So we're just Gotham Wastelands. So, I mean, not, nothing much content-wise in terms of that. Uh, next was... Oops, next was episode 9. Was that Halls of Power? No, War of the Light. Yeah, War of the Light, because that was A and B. Um, but that was just a Salt and Battery. Like, salt and Battery brought the OP rings. Uh, you had the Strike Team and Mist Recovery operations. The Salt and Battery, again, was an open world operation, so you had to kind of uh, fight an open world, but it was, at least it was instance. You had the Metropolis Battle Zone stuff, or uh, Branks Command Center. I don't know. A and B itself is not worth a B. That's going to be a C. I feel like I feel like a lot of stuff is going to be a C here. But I mean, just on the strength of the Assault, assault and Battery was interesting with having to permastun the Manhunters and you had the Maze. But I mean, Assault and Battery itself is, is not worth a B. Uh, Amazon Fury Part 1. I mean, same thing. Like The biggest part of Amazon Fury Part 1 was that the that's when League Calls came out. Uh, so, but the problem is that when League Calls came out, all you had to do was run like the Port of Paradise, supply lines at those duos. You had the Gotham Under Siege missions. You have Themyscira Divided. So you had, that's the only content you had to earn prestige to unlock your League Call, which took forever to unlock because of the, the amount of prestige you needed. But uh, that was, that was something that uh, took a lot of effort. And I remember just running like, you know, 15 to 20 Themyscira Divided every single day just to try to get prestige to unlock our League Call. But I mean, I guess experiences may differ because you may have had like tons of people in your league back then we didn't have that many people in family uh, trying to run it uh next was this was halls of power halls of power oh this yeah this was the like lockdown relics and artifacts so this was the raids that actually used those raids hit the op neck um integrating crime wave and security breach i mean that's an a I mean, those raids weren't bad. I mean, you had, you had three raids in a DLC. Lockdown, you had the different variations of it. Um, uh, was it even relics and, and artifacts was interesting. So yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of content in there. Uh, War of the Light, that was that was Love and War. So it'd be uh, uh, Varus Impurity, Rage Im Impurity, the Zamron Conversion Chamber, that, like Spark of Ion. Um, was that the duo? Yeah, Spark of Parallax was the solo, Spark of Ion was the duo. I mean, same thing. Like, the, the strength of Love and War is not worth it to move up. It's still It was still an open world operation for some of it. You're still waiting on people to catch up. The um, the bosses fight weren't that interesting. I mean, last boss fight had uh, that one feat. Was it a one piece or something like that? But that was interesting. But you still like need your DPS using the dots. Can go through Wonder Woman's Reflect. Interesting raid, but not enough of a you know DLC just to carry that one raid. Uh, after that, oh, this is um, this is Amazon Fury Part Two. I mean, that's that's S for me, S tier for me. That's Throne of the Dead, Halls of Hades, Labyrinth, uh, Return to Nexus. There's another alert in there too that I'm missing. Um, it's AOD, Act of Defiance. Same thing, the Gotham Under Siege missions, but so much content in that DLC. I mean, Throwing the Dead had its own glitches in the final boss, and the Elite Gear was the one Sierra that was higher, so with Sierra 114 was the max. You had people resetting just the first boss. You needed four tanks at some point in Throwing the Dead Elite. So it's it was really fun. Whole bunch of content, too. Oh, that was the OP, OP face, too, which I didn't get. I never got any of these freaking OP items. Uh, after that, we're into uh, Halls of Power Part Two. That was Happiness Home. I was This is the one DLC that I wasn't there at the beginning of it. But I mean, Happiness Home was fun. I mean, I think that's a B because we still have Happiness Home. We still knew Genesis now. There's some uh, Granny's Goodness uh, feat was nice in Happiness Home Elite. Fail exams wasn't too bad. Um, and then we had the new Genesis open world missions. I think that's enough to bring it to a B. But I wouldn't say the strength of it was still like Happiness Home Elite was still beat early on, so it wasn't that difficult. And this was kind of what brought us into well, the monthly content. So before these were kind of like DLCs that were spread out. Now we have switched over to monthly content for a while. That basically instead of getting like 
multiple duos, solos, alerts, raids. Uh, they broke it down to like, you know, a partner. So you get like an alert and a duo or alert and a solo, you know, raid and an alert or raid and a solo, like that kind of uh, combinations. So the first one was, uh, this is episode 15 now. This is uh, Bombshell Paradox and the uh, Zamron duo. I mean, Bombshell Paradox was not interesting enough for me. It was pretty boring. I mean, it's had its moments, but... I think the only interesting parts is going for, like, the feats. The feats in Bombshell Paradox were kind of interesting, but the raid itself wasn't. 16, same thing. Death, uh, Desiccated Cathedral and O Under Siege. I mean, you have an entire month DLC that's only an alert. And, um... Is it a challenge? Yeah, O Under Siege was a challenge. So it's an alert and a solo. Just not enough for a month. I mean, even Death of Cathedral Elite wasn't that interesting. Uh, 17, it's a holy matrimony. Matrimony? Yeah, matrimony, if I pronounce that correctly. And then the Flash Duo. I love the base items in the Flash Duo. And, and holy matrimony, the first boss was kind of interesting. Trigon was kind of meh. Maybe that falls under C again. Just wasn't enough. To, it's not enough to push it to a B. Black as day is definitely. Um, is that an A? I mean, once again, my experiences may differ from yours. I loved Black as Day as a raid. You had the no death feed. You had two kind of two parts of the raid. Um, you had the all the feats at the end, like the corrupted, uncorrupted. When ads died, they left that kind of like pool of darkness on the bottom. You had the the, uh, the kind of like black hand that would that would pull you in, like grasp, grasping hand. The styles were interesting, were the elite styles in terms of that cape and the chest. And I mean, the demon pit wasn't that bad either for in terms of um, a duo. But Blackest Day was I, I love that raid. Uh, this was Demon's Plan and what was that alert, that duo called? Deep Desires? It was Deep Something. That's a C again. I mean, Demon's Plan Elite was just boring. It took so long because there was the Elite version. Obviously, things hit harder and more had more health. But there's so many ads in the hallways from those ninjas appearing. It just took forever. The OP hands were the weakest of the OP items. They were pretty common. Everyone got them. I mean, if I get an OP item, then you know it's pretty common. And Deep Desires was just nothing interesting with that. Uh, that brings us to Black as Night. I'm, that's gonna, I'm gonna put a B for that, because I mean, the Wasteland duo wasn't that interesting, uh, but Black as Night was kind of a fun raid for a while. You had the Black Holes, the final boss. You had the first boss with the, not so much puzzle, but the objective you had to follow. You had the whole whack ton of ads on the second boss. Uh, it was kind of a DPS's dream. So that's, that's enough to bring to a B for me. In terms of it was only a month and you still got interesting content. I think Prison Break. The first piece duo in Prison Break. I mean, was Prison Break a B? I mean, the Grodd fight was kind of interesting. Dr. Light and his laser. Everyone had to block, but it went by pretty quick. And it was just the no death feed that was really interesting in Prison Break. I mean, that's a C for me. And the duo was really nothing. I, Prison Break... Prison Break wasn't better than Blackest Night, and it wasn't better than Blackest Day. So that's why it, it's not going to fall into an A or B for me. Uh, now we're... This is what the... Uh, Science Spire and... Um, Phantom Zone. Phantom Zone Elite. I mean, that's a C again for me. I mean, you had the OP head in, in the Phantom Zone. But the Elite, I mean, once again, just... It wasn't... It was, it was a filler, basically. It was like a filler episode for a month. Like, obviously, there's nothing much to do in that one month. Brainiac Bottle Ship, I'm definitely going to put that as a B. That was a really fun raid. In terms of, uh, I mean, the Will of Dark Side, I mean, whatever. The Will of Dark Side's a duo, but, I mean, the battle, bottle, Brainiac's Bottle Ship, the last fight was kind of interesting. You had those ads. You had to perma stun where they, they wiped the group. It was, it was really fun to DPS. Dark Side War Factor goes S tier. I mean, even the Harley duo, people complained that the Harley duo was hard for a while. And Dark Side War Factory just easily fun for a month. I mean, Dark Side War Factory had the first time since Paradox Wave where it was impossible to get... Well, I wasn't saying it was impossible. It was 100% luck to get Omega and Omega during Dark Side War Factory's release. And we came really close a bunch of times, but we knew that it was just going to be luck. Like, there was no amount of skill that we had that was going to get us that Omega Omega feat during the DLC cycle. We had to wait until we got the extra gear just for survivability. Because we could just keep running it and get to, like, you know, 1%, 10% each time. But 
I mean, it, we knew it was going to be luck based if we got it. But yeah, that's no one. No one in the entire game got Omega and Omega during the actual DLC's release. They had to wait till the next DLC came out and get a little bit of gear, and then we had Rip in Time. I mean, honestly, that's a D for me. Iceberg Lounge Solo was that? No, that was a duo. Iceberg Lounge Duo was were super boring. I mean, I think the base items were interesting. That was about it. Rip in Time, the alert itself sucked. Once again, it was the OP hands. The only time, the only thing that Rip in Time was interesting for was that second boss with the fight with the flames. But I mean, even the story wasn't interesting. The alert was just long. It, it, it's ah, it's tough though. I mean, is it a D though? Because fan. No, no. I, I personally, this is going to be my call again. I like Phantom Zone more than I like Rip and Time, so that means I can't put them both as a C. Uh, and then this one we have the Wayne Manor Gala and KCT. That's a definitely a D. KCT was a terrible raid. Terrible story wise, terrible mechanics. I mean, I couldn't even tell you what Doomsday's mechanics were from day one to like the last day because no one ever followed them, they just DPSed. Like, you could ignore the mechanics from day one, and it just turned into a comp raid. Uh, Amazon Fury Part 3, that's going to be S tier for me. Uh, Amazon Fury Part 3, that's um, Underwood Trials, that's Olympus, that's Gods of Monsters. We had Typhoon's uh, Monster Invasion in the open world. Uh, the Raising Hades duo. So much content, uh, and you couldn't really skip ahead. You had to wait to gear up and open boxes to get your purple unlock. Uh, you had a lot of collections to get because there's two OP items at DLC. So just tons of content, tons of replayability. I think it took about 20 runs to get full renown for Olympus. And then you had like Olympus Elite being unique with the, the golden apple and, and the bird final boss. So it's just tons of... Re like you definitely got your money's worth of that DLC. Uh, Age of Justice, same thing. That's going to be S tier. Age of Justice was War Crimes, JFA... Or Justice for All, Ultimate Soldier. We had two brand new open worlds, in, or technically brand new, but uh, Time Torn Area 51, War Torn Village, Saving Justice, War Crimes. We had three different OP items. You had to learn, run the alerts every day to make money and to get your collections. Huge DLC in terms of content, in terms of feats, uh, in terms of elite victory. Uh, this DLC also was unique because the first DLC, the first half of the DLC was AMs and, and Advanced Mechanics, or sorry, Advanced Mechanics of Weapon Mastery, and then the second half of the DLC release was Stats Revamp. So it, it ran for a long time, tons of content, you needed like, well, like probably like 2,000 marks to get everything in terms of uh, all the feats. Uh, Riddle with Crime, that's tough again. I mean, honestly, to me, that's a fail raid. I know so many people run it, but think the only reason why um, Real of the Crime or, or um, Gotham City Zoo is popular is because of the, the Man Back Commandos. If those Man Back Commandos were not in that raid, no one would run it. They'd run it for feats, and that was it. Absolutely butchered on the release in terms of like the no death feat not counting, uh, looping rolled, uh, uh, like roll need. Uh, mission open world missions were broken people just used flight and flew above the mechanics on the second boss in terms of the tornadoes so it's just it was a huge mess and honestly the only reason why it was farmed was for the man back commandos because it was a skill point and you could make a lot of money but if the man back commandos didn't exist then no one would run that dlc so I, you can't give it like a c just for that uh earth 3 was the next one for me earth 3 is another fail I mean, Panopticon was beat day one by Pugs. I mean, you could queue up and beat Elite. Like, it was so easy. And Justice System was boring. The Escape really wasn't that interesting either. You had uh, the one feat that was a two-star. I forget what it was. That was kind of interesting. But, I mean, that whole rage just turned to a comp. Same thing as KCT. Uh, the only reason why people run Penny nowadays is, is a comp raid. Just because it's so easy, you can't die. And it's like a mix of, like, AoE and single target damage. So it goes quick. Uh, Deluge. That's tricky. Is there a C or D? That's tough. I think I'm going to have to give that a one to C, personally. I mean, yeah, 
it was a re it was a re um, reuses of Central City. We had Spindra Station, which was kind of fun. It was actually pretty fun as a raid. It wasn't that difficult though. Uh, Threat Below was kind of not that difficult. Same thing. And Elite was was more straightforward raid. I mean, no, that's a fail. I'm talking myself out of it. <laughs> Because, I mean, that Star Wars Invasion that alert took like five minutes. Duel was boring. The open world missions. Um, like the, the one open world mission took like 30 seconds. And you got eight marks. Like literally it was like 30 seconds. Everyone just spammed the star bounty to get mar to get their marks. Like I think I got that finished that DLC in like a week. Like yeah, I spent a lot of replays on it. But I mean, if you can finish an entire DLC in like a week, I mean, it's not that interesting. Uh, Teen Titans for me goes to A. We got Hive and Machine were really fun raids. Is it going to be S? Nah, it's not going to be S tier because the raids weren't long enough. Like, Machine was pretty short. Um, didn't have a whole ton of replayability because there's no feats. They didn't put any good feats at all in Machine Elite. Or did Machine Elite even have any feats? I can't remember. I don't think it had any feats. Hive was fun. The, the Titans Alert was okay. The duo was, I mean, really straightforward. Titans Island was interesting. This new map, so it's definitely an A. It's a strong A, but not not S tier. Atlantis, that's going to be a C. Nah, I I want to I want to put Atlantis as a D, but that's me because I hate swimming. Yeah, no, no, screw. It. I'm talking myself out of it again. I'm putting Atlantis as a D because the swim. Swimming being forced down our throats was absolutely ridiculous. You had tanks running shock soders and manbat just so that we wouldn't have to swim. Because, you know, being tanking and DPSing as flight is completely annoying. Uh, trying to, like, you know, e even trying to, like, jump cancel flurry shots and stuff when you're when you're f uh, have, being forced to fly. You had the raid. Uh, Crown of Thorns was only fun from a tanking perspective and only fun in last boss. The, the middle fights was you go into a room, do the same thing, then do it again, then do it again. And then you have a feat four in a row, absolutely a thousand percent RNG. There's no way you can you can do that feat without having RNG on your side. There's no tells, there's no nothing. I'm sure there's people that still don't have that feat because it's pure luck. So that I mean that was just a, a fail raid just because they're trying to I don't know make it, uh, promote the uh, movie Aquaman, but the DLC itself was a fail. I mean thrown. You had thrown where you took 10 minutes to reach, to reach the final part of the final fight. And if you wiped, you had to waste 10 minutes again, having absolutely no way to die. If you had your augments up, you couldn't die from Sea Beast's slam. So it was just... And you also had Eye of the Gemini spam for the first three quarters of that DLC. So you're shielded like every every like 25 seconds you had a healer shield. So just really... It's just a fail. Justice League Dark for me gets an A. I mean, Shatter Gotham and the Shazam Cog had its own kind of weaknesses, but I mean, the the feats, uh, Raving Man was still interesting, and I I don't even know if it's possible. I mean, maybe now with our gear, but doing the speed feat in Elite, 17 minute doing 17 minute Elite run, you'd, it takes you like five minutes just to run uh, run over the rocks. So that'd be interesting to see if you could do a, uh, a speed feat in Shatter Gotham in Elite. I'm sure you can now with our gear, but. I mean, no one even attempted it back in the day because it was like the timing was so tight on it. And you had the madness buff the entire time, the madness uh, dot tick. So it's, it, it was a still. And, he, and even the other raid, uh, what was it? Uh, Fellowship of the Arcane was, wasn't that bad. And then you had Chaos Gotham too. And then we get into the raids where everyone really knows all these already. Metal Part 1. And minute, that's a B for me. Yeah. I mean, Back Cave Breach wasn't that interesting. False Idols was interesting. Monsters of Metal was, I mean, really boring. I mean, you didn't even need to kill anything. Like, if we actually killed the, the Batman who laughs at the end, that would be interesting. But, I mean, you literally didn't have to kill anything of the final boss. You could just keep running. Keep running the uh, the, term, the, um, the barrels in. I mean, no one wanted to play it like that, but, I mean, we did it. All support rolls, just run. Don't even kill anything. Don't even, like, hit a power. Just keep running barrels. Uh, Metal Part 2. Metal Part 2, I'm going to put a B as well. I mean, clock... Um, not clocked out of this next deal. Like jumping out of myself here. Uh, the Phoenix Cannon was interesting, but it was so buggy on release. Dark Multiverse had to be shut down because it was so much bugged. This was just execution was terrible this DLC and they just never caught up to it 
I mean, the raids themselves are interesting enough to keep it a B, but not any higher than that. And, and or sorry, it's high enough that it's not going to be a C or a D. Like execution was an F, like not a blow D, but um, it's kind of gotten a little bit better now. The puzzle was kind of interesting from the first point of view. I mean, Dark Multiverse has its moments, but it's not high enough to be an, an A or an S, and it's not bad enough to be a C or B. It's like a B minus. And then Birds of Prey, our final one, this is kind of like TBD. So I'm going to probably put this to the same at the C because, I mean, Clock Tower is really interesting and it's a lot of fun, but at the same time, it's like a 15 minute raid when you're doing it correctly in Elite. Fire and Brimstone saw a lot of changes. I haven't been able to see those changes yet, so I'm not sure if that got better. Uh, the, like the, the alert is longer than both the raids. Uh, Metropolis, once again, the, the bounty is kind of stupid where there's no teleport location to it. The bounty you could solo. I mean, it's been soloed a bunch of times already. I'm sure they got more stuff coming in the future, but it's, right now it's a it's TBD, but it's certainly not better. To, it's not good enough to be an A or an S, and it's not bad enough to be a C or D yet. So that's kind of where I personally rank everything. Once again, I'll put this template in the description if you want to make it yourself and then take a, an image of it and post it in the comments so I can kind of see how you would rank it. Or if you want to see, or if you want to tell me in the comment section how you'd rank it, you know, feel free. I'm always open to suggestions and I know this is kind of my personal opinion myself and how I view things at the time. But uh, hope you guys liked the video and hopefully we can get back to some regular scheduled programming coming up. Thank you guys. Take care.